Hi, this is Mr. Williamson. I'm going to go over the internal fish anatomy in this video. Uh, you probably should have your list of terms with you and your diagrams to go over with. I'm going to show you both the diagram and on the fish um, what to look for and, and what you need to know. Uh, so here we go. First thing we're going to take a look at is um, the uh, gills. We're going to go down in order here. We're going to be going down in order of these lines first, and then we'll go over these lines second. So like I said, the first one is the gills. In the diagram, it's this half circle right here. Um, and uh, if you watch the internal, external, watch the external anatomy video, we've already uh, covered the gills once, but the gills in this case are these, this right here. And it is the site of respiration. Uh, the water flows into um, the mouth. Um, this way out of the operculum which is the mains of it is up here that's the operculum that we cut off but it goes over the gills and as it goes over the gills the gills remove the oxygen the dissolved oxygen that is in the water and the water the oxygen gets in there through uh, diffusion of um, from high concentration to low concentration like we talked about uh, first semester and um, the gills remove it and oxygenate the blood so and there's, uh, they don't really look that color in, in normally, like on the other video I showed you, but in normally, they're this color. Uh, this is a, a recently killed fish. I don't know who it is, who's, what kind or anything like that, but it's a recently killed fish. And you can see where all the, the, the color of the red is because it's, there's a lot of blood that goes through the, the, the gills um, because they have to get uh, the, uh, the blood oxygenated for the fish. Another example, here's someone that has cut, cut them out. Um, and you can see the gills on both sides, uh, again, full of blood. And um, there's, there's, there, but again, not the color of the, um, the, the ones we have. You can also see here, uh, there's a lot of surface area on the gills. It's, the, the better, more surface area that you have, the more oxygen that can be absorbed into the blood system. And um, therefore, the more oxygen can be brought into the, the, the fish. So, okay, we're looking now at the second line which is the heart okay um, this organ right up here and uh, it might be called the ventricle because technically um, the heart actually kind of extends a little bit farther up there and this is just the lower part of the heart which is the ventricle um, and in the, the fish that we have it looks kind of like this it's this little triangular thing right down here and um, you kind of have to, but if, if you didn't dissect it well enough, if you didn't cut down far enough, cut this way, if you stopped here, it's going to be real hard to find. You really need to make sure you cut down there. But that's the tip of the heart. Um, and and uh, another view of it here is here. Again, this little triangular shape right there is the heart. You don't have to identify it, just that's the heart. What does it do? It pumps blood, like all hearts do. Uh, they pump blood for the organism. Please don't tell me that they during the test that they keep the fish alive. All, all the organs keep the fish alive, so it's, they, they pump blood, okay? Um, this is a, a close-up of one of those images. Again, you can see the heart right there. So, um, it, again, the, the heart, it's the, the, it's the site of uh, blood. It's basically the, the pump for the blood and circulate the blood system. Um, whoops, sorry about that. Okay, the next one, third one is uh, talking about this one here, which is the uh, liver. All right, and it's, and this is this is a, a white croaker up here, so it's really not that shape. Ours in, the, in our perch is more of a lobe shaped like this. So you're not gonna see it that look like that. It's gonna look more like you see here, um, this, this organism right, organ, excuse me, this organ right here is the liver. Um, this liver is a site of enzyme production for uh, enzymes for both breaking down food and digestion or also toxins. Um, you're the body of, of almost all organisms are exposed to a lot of toxins through the environment and uh, therefore they, we, we need to break them down to protect our body and the liver produces those enzymes that to break down the toxins. Remember an enzyme is a protein that, that basically acts on a very specific uh, um, type of a, a substrate. And, and so the, the enzyme would come in and would fit just that one particular thing. And when it's all done, 
uh, the enzyme would break it up and, and it would break it in half, yet the enzyme is not used up. So when we're all done, you would end up with this two, uh, two parts of the, the toxin or whatever it's breaking up, and the enzyme is still reusable and goes on to the next thing. Uh, we talked about this again in, in first semester uh, when we we're talking about uh, the, the biochemicals and um, that would be, you know, the, the a protein that's produced by the liver. But that's liver. It makes enzymes for both digestion and for, um, and for breaking out toxins down. Um, there's another image of it. You can see it here. Um, liver's here. Uh, this was distended and pushed aside because this fish actually has ovaries, which kind of came up through into here and pushed it aside. But um, and you can see where the liver is and, and uh, again, enzyme production. Um, a close up of that, that same liver. And again, just showing you so you get a better view, idea of what, where it is. So. Uh, the fourth line, we're looking at the fourth line down right here, and it goes up to the pyloric cica. That's cica. I think that's how it's spelled. Uh, if you come close during the test, I'm fine. Pyloric something would be fine. Don't please don't call it the pyloric caca. That doesn't sound right. I'll take it, but that's not what it is. The pyloric cica are these finger-like organs here that, that surround the stomach. The stomach is right here. Okay, this is the stomach, and they surround the stomach. And uh, they aid in digestion. Um, there you can see this is the stomach, okay? And the pyloric cica are these fingers that surround the stomach right here. Um, and and they're, they're not always easy to find, to be honest with you. Uh, but if, you, if I ask you, what are these fingers that surround the stomach? I'm kind of giving you a hint. They're fingers that's little finger-like things that surround the, the stomach. And they aid in digestion. Or if I say, where's the pyloric cica? You can just say, well, they're the finger-like things that surround the stomach and they aid in digestion. And I'll know that you understand what we're talking about. So, um, the next line, we're talking about the fifth line. The fifth line is this one here, and it goes to the intestine. And uh, up here, the intestine actually goes all the way down, all the way down to the anus. Um, and the intestine, like in all organisms, um, is the site of nutrient absorption, just like it was in the, both worms, just like it will be in all the rest of them. If you talk about intestine, it's, it's almost always the site of, of nutrient absorption. It's where the digestion takes place. The enzymes are produced by the liver and um, brought into uh, the, 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 secreted into the, enzyme, the, the intestine where they break down the food. And you can see here it goes all the way down. I'm kind of covered up there, but... Um, they break down the food and uh, eventually down to a very small, you know, the, micro, the, the biochemicals, the carbohydrates and the proteins, uh, lipids. And, uh, and that is absorbed into the blood system of the, the fish and, and circulated around the, the fish. Um, and the cells are used it for uh, nutrient absorption and, and for uh, ATP, ATP production. So uh, the, the intestine, side of nutrient absorption. And that brings us to... Um, the last one, which is right here, which is the stomach. And the stomach is this here. And our fish, it's not quite as large, especially the one I have. This is the stomach all through there. It's surrounded by the polar cica, like I said earlier. Um, and the stomach's function is to, is, is to store and sterilize food. Um, it allows all or any organism that has a, a stomach to uh, eat a great, meal, great deal of food all at once and then digest it at its own pace. If, if you didn't have a stomach, you would have to, to, to get the same amount of nutrients. You would have to keep eating and keep eating. Well, as that's uh, not always possible. So if you get a large amount of food at once, you want a place to keep it so you can digest it at the speed that your body needs it. And... Um, that's what the stomach does. Our stomach stores and sterilizes. I'm not sure if the fish sterilizes the food, but it definitely stores it. When I say it sterilizes the food, um, you eat a lot of stuff that isn't really good for you all the time, like fungus, bacteria, uh, parasitic worm, uh, eggs, something like that. Probably not as much in our society and culture, but it does happen. Um, but the acids in our stomach break it down. And again, I'm not sure that the, the acids in the, the fish break it down. Um, but... 
but for safety's sake, just let's just say if you're on the test, just just say it, it's the site of a uh, um, uh, store. It stores and sterilizes the food. Okay, so um, now and that's actually the, the like the purpose of like a lap band or a, a stomach stapling or something is you decrease the size of the stomach, therefore you don't bring in as much nutrients. You can't hold as much nutrients. Um, therefore, you're not bringing in as much calories, and your body doesn't um, doesn't absorb as many calories because your body pretty much absorbs all the calories that you eat. You know, there's none, none of them really pass, or some do, but not a lot of them pass through you. And so the idea is that if we have a smaller stomach, we don't take, we don't have, can't store as much food. We don't bring in as much calories because we get hungry. Uh, we, we stop being hungry quicker, and therefore we we don't in, ingest as much calories. Well. And then that's why the stomach does allow us to store that food and, and keep it until we're, we need it to, for digestion. So um, now we're over on the other side. Uh, we'll go over top, starting at the top here. And this is the swim bladder. And the swim bladder is used to, um, for buoyancy on the fish. It, uh, you can see it here. It's, it's really nice, nice this whole empty space here. And it's empty because, um, well, this this what you see here. Oh, sorry about that. Um, what you see here is the side of the fish. This is all the other side of the fish. Um, and when you cut off the, the one side and the other side, this, this side that we cut off is down here, um, you cut off part of the swim bladder. It's like cutting off uh, the side of a car. You don't have that side anymore. Um, so, so that's no longer there. But the swim bladder, uh, it, it, it gives buoyancy to the fish. It, um, uh, the fish needs to, rather than, than, um, rather than, than working to stay up, you know, it's sinking, it's working to stay up, it can swim level and use less energy. Or if it's, it's floating, it doesn't have to swim down towards the, to, to stay at one level. Um, so it's able to just use less energy. Uh, there's a video on uh, the, my, the the fish dissection page on BioApes that you might want to take a look at to understand a little bit more how the swim bladder works. But if you just want to know about the test, then then you probably you just need to know that the swim bladder is responsible for the buoyancy of the fish. Um, it'll fill it up with air to 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 be more near the surface. It'll be take the air out of it to, if it wants to sink down. And it doesn't do it real quickly, so it's a it's a slow uh, adjustment. It doesn't happen real quickly. Um, anyways, um, the next one is the, the kidney that's up here. It's this, they, they're going to appear as a black line, the middle line here. This is the kidney. Uh, the kidney is, acts is filter of the waste product out of the fish. Um, it's, it's kind of like, uh, the, again, like we had in the worm and you've got two of them, but it's along the back here. It's this black band right along the back there. And again, it filters out the waste product from uh, the, the fish blood system. Uh, the waste product being the, 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 the cells produce waste as they, they produce, go through living. Um, uh, maybe there's other things in the toxins, maybe broken down toxins, things like that, that need to be filtered out. Um, it's osmoregulation. If you get too much water in your cells, you need to get rid of it. That's why you urinate a lot when you're, you're well hydrated. Or if you're not well hydrated, you're high dehydrated, you don't urinate as much because your kidneys are are, are keeping the amount of, of water in your body, trying to keep that constant. Um, that's homeostasis, kind of, well, again, we talked about first semester. But in the fish, it's along this black band along the back of the fish um, that you can see. Uh, you can also see it kind of here. It's a little bigger, closer here. This black band right in there against the back. Um, and again, that's that's osmoregulation. So um, it's it's the acts as a kidney. So against the back, and then finally, um, we have the bottom down here. We have the ovaries or the testes, um, and they're the the reproductive structures for the fish. Uh, this one happens. The one that I dissected to do this happens to be a female. And you can see the the ovary here and see all the eggs. This is the ovary um, before it was removed to show you some of the other things. And each one of these little dots um, is an egg. Um, if you have something like that, then it's a female. 
uh, and it's ready to lay its eggs. Remember, they don't have um, um, sex. There's no introduction of sperm into the fish. So the, the, egg, the, the female doesn't like when it, she uh, lays her eggs or releases her eggs. They're not already fertilized. They're released into the water. Uh, the male comes along and, and puts his sperm into the water, and they hopefully the eggs and the sperm get together and, and the fertilization takes place. Um, if you may not have something like this. You may have something that's, that's kind of um, this color. Okay, it may be this color here, but it's gonna be much smaller. You'd see the you would see the the intestine uh, coming down from the stomach and probably folding over, going out the anus, and then you would see this kind of color, a little teeny sac back here, and that would be the ovaries also. If it's kind of that, it's a, maybe a little darker cream color than that. But if you just have a little one back there like that, then it's probably it's also probably a female. And again, ask me in class, and I'll be glad to, to take a look at your fish and explain it to you. But it's probably a female that is not ready to release the eggs. She hasn't reached either uh, sexual maturity or she just, for some reason, I, again, I don't know that much about fish to tell you their reproductive cycle, but they're not ready. she's not ready to release eggs. On the other hand, you might have um, a fish that has uh, a, a, this color, kind of the color of the liver, but it's a, it's a band or, or an organ that kind of goes all the way back here. And again, you have the the intestine that kind of comes back and, and back this way. And you'll have this cream-colored band up in this area that um, kind of goes there. And that would be the testes. It's a, it's a very light cream-colored color. It's almost white, almost white, but or, or yellowish white maybe. Uh, it's much lighter than the kidney, but it's kind of that color. Um, it's definitely not the color of the ovary here, which I, I don't know, tan, khaki. Um, but it would be a light-colored, and that would make it a male. Uh, when those would be the testes, they produce sperm. And again, in class, I'll come around to each group and we'll talk about your fish, make sure you know which one you have, male or female, and um, uh, answer any of the questions you have for that. So um, here is an example of, of kind of showing you, I don't know why this is here, but, but we'll go over it. Um, you have, uh, this would be the swim bladder. This is the, the remainder of the swim bladder right here. It's, it's a thin thing. This is kind of the shelf that the, the ovary was underneath. And this forms a large, um, almost like a balloon for the fish to to, to have. So, um, and that's the, the the external anatomy. There is there is one more thing I'd like to show you, and I've got to kind of go back here. Oh, you can see them here. This is good. In the back in the swim bladder, you can see uh, these little lines. All right, and you can actually see them really well if you look at the piece of the fish you removed. You, that you cut off you'll see them and and they're actually going to go up and then they kind of go this way and then they kind of go that way that's the myomere the myomere are the muscles and there's a band of muscles for a lot of bands of muscles and you can see the line here you can see a line here you can see a line here and the line there and if i remove all those and, and start over and just show you the bottom ones like a line 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 those are the myomeres those are bands of muscles and that's why the shark the shark sorry about that the fish moves um it's it's that's what it's it's using to, to move its its caudal fin and, and and move its body back and forth and i didn't talk about that in class so hopefully you get that right now so um again uh that is the internal anatomy if you have any questions make sure you ask me in class consult your study guide um, I hope you're studying for the test. Uh, see you at the test, and uh, good luck.